We got some huge news yesterday in regards to the Xbox Activision Blizzard deal, and Sony looks even worse now with their arguments against this deal. Hey, if it's your first time here and you are interested in daily content on everything Xbox news related, you're in the right spot. So please consider hitting that subscribe button if you enjoy this video. So the Xbox Activision Blizzard deal is really, really heating up. There's more investigations from all of these regulatory bodies, the CMA, the EU, the FTC. The biggest complainant against this deal is PlayStation and Sony as they are trying everything in their power to stop this deal from going through. You can think of a couple of reasons as to why the biggest ones of all for them is the fact that Call of Duty makes them the most money every single year. They have the marketing rights right now. It is paying off greatly for PlayStation. We know that Xbox has said multiple times that they're willing to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. It doesn't make any sense for Xbox to take it off of the platform. The thing here is, even if that's the case, PlayStation is still losing because they're going to be paying money to Xbox for this game, which means Xbox can reinvest that money, which helps them grow Game Pass and helps them grow their ecosystem. And I mean, to PlayStation, Xbox is their direct competitor. Now, we've seen Phil Spencer talk about this as well in the sense that it's PlayStation isn't the direct competition to Xbox. They want this deal for growing the mobile side of things. And if you sit back and think about it, that does make a ton of sense. Xbox and Microsoft are very, very weak on the mobile gaming side and being able to get a company like Activision Blizzard where they have access to King and they have access to all of the great mobile games like Diablo Mortal and Call of Duty Mobile it's going to greatly help that side of their business and they know that's the place where they have the most growth in the next 10 or so years so this entire argument about it being strictly about call of duty has been a narrative completely created by playstation and now we have another big report here from the new york times where we get some more information on just how long xbox was willing to offer Call of Duty for PlayStation in terms of the length of years that they can guarantee it will stay on their platform. So here is the report and it talks about tons of stuff with this deal and gives us some information that we didn't previously have, which I think personally changes everything. Changes everything as to the arguments that PlayStation has. It's an argument that is obsolete now. It makes no sense. And they really have nothing here when they talk about Call of Duty and being worried that Xbox is going to take Call of Duty off of the PlayStation platform. So here's the board. Can big tech get bigger? Microsoft presses governments to say yes. In recent weeks, Microsoft has accused Sony, its chief video game rival of misleading regulators. And we have seen Phil Spencer come out last week and talk about this. He didn't specifically say misleading. He gave his opinion that the idea that this entire deal is around Call of Duty is just a construct by the console rival, which obviously he is referring to PlayStation. And then he talks about how this deal is about the mobile side of gaming. And like I said, I think he's completely correct on that. Everyone is talking about Call of Duty because it's such a huge franchise, but there's so much more to this deal. And the reason why Call of Duty is always in the headline is only because PlayStation has continuously complained about it. No other companies have complained about Call of Duty. No one else cares. Only PlayStation cares. Continues here and says its lawyers have showed off game consoles, including an Xbox to British officials and the president of a major union that Microsoft would has spoken up on the company's behalf to the Federal Trade Commission. Now, to put into perspective just how big this deal is, they mention it here, comparing it to the other big deals that we've seen in the history of big tech. And this is the largest consumer deal since AOL bought Time Warner two decades ago. So that's a long time. And obviously, we know what's happened with Twitter. Elon Musk recently taking it over for $44 billion. It's obviously bigger than that by actually quite a large amount of money, with this deal being worth $69 billion. Now, right now, we're in this stage of Microsoft having to show their cards and say, hey, this is why this deal is not going to affect competition. I know Sony and PlayStation and Jim Ryan are going everywhere, spreading all this information to try to stop this deal and coming up with all of these insane reasons while not showing all of the anti-consumer things that they actually do to that actually hurts gamers and actually hurts the industry. But here is why this is gonna be something that will be good for the consumer and good for gamers. And the main thing here is the ecosystem, the ability to play these games that Microsoft owns on any device that you own essentially other than 
the Nintendo Switch, and the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. So that alone, as a consumer, is a good thing where you can play games on your phone, on your tablet, on your browser, on your Xbox, on your smart TV, on your smart fridge, anywhere that Xbox Game Pass is available or anywhere that Xbox Cloud Gaming is available or anywhere that the ecosystem is going to be available, however else they decide to expand that out in the upcoming years. Now, here is the main thing they say in this article in terms of why I guess they're talking about this and it has to do with big tech and being able to expand their power and wield the amount of power that they have. And they say here, whether Microsoft succeeds in gaining regulatory approval to buy Activision, which makes games such as Candy Crush and Call of Duty, it will send a message about big tech's ability to expand in the face of mounting fears that industry giants will too much power. If Microsoft, whose public affairs operations has spent the past decade building the company's nice guy reputation, can't get a mega deal through, can anyone? And Microsoft's president, Brad Smith, who previously came out, I'm not sure when, I think maybe it was a couple months ago or something, said that the deal was progressing faster than he expected, it was progressing nicely, and there was really no, I guess, roadblocks or issues right now that they had ran into. He has this to say, if this deal had happened four years ago, this would hardly be of any interest. If one cannot do something easy, then we all know you can't do something hard. So you take a look at gaming four years ago, right? And it was the end-ish of the Xbox One generation, there were still two more years to go before the launch of the Xbox Series S and X. The Xbox One had a bad generation overall. And some people thought that, that may have been the end of Xbox. They Maybe they would have just turned into a publisher, wouldn't have come out with a new console. Obviously that wasn't the case. And now they're doing so well that this deal has a ton more scrutiny. PlayStation's sitting there and they're looking at Xbox, they're looking at their strategy and they're probably like, damn, we missed the boat. We missed the boat on subscription. We missed the boat on expanding at our ecosystem and we are going to be behind Xbox. So if this deal goes through, it's just going to progress that we are gonna be behind at a much faster rate because they're gonna have access to incredible mobile games. They're gonna have access to the biggest IP on our platform, which we're gonna to have to pay them money for. And it's gonna really, really hurt our business. And that's why PlayStation is extremely scared right now. Now, in terms of big tech, I mean, this has been something that these regulators are focused on. They are trying to reduce the power of big tech companies. We've seen stuff with Meta and Giphy and being forced to sell Giphy. Now, the biggest question that they have which again, Microsoft has answered multiple times, is are they going to use this power of having those Activision Blizzard IPs and take those IPs off of other platforms to potentially foreclose a company like Sony? And are they gonna use this power to get an advantage in game streaming as that is going to be the future by having a subscription service that is essentially unmatched because they have all of the great games that they're going to have within the game streaming service. And I can see that argument to some extent where you look at Xbox Cloud Gaming right now at an Xbox Game Pass, it already is unmatched. There's nothing out there that is better than it. And there's nothing out there that is even trying to be better than it. Even if you take a look at PlayStation Plus, it's not even close. It doesn't offer their first party games. It doesn't offer the same amount of features. It doesn't offer the perks and things like that when it comes to signing up to the entire ecosystem. It's not close. And PlayStation is almost not even trying to make it close. They're almost not even trying to compete with some of the decisions that they are making when they continuously come out and say, hey, we have no way to compete, even though their first party games are sitting right in front of them, where they could put those into the service. They could work on expanding out their cloud gaming technology and provide a service that, hey, you pay $18 a month, which I think is the cost right now for the highest tier. You get access to our day one games and you can stream these on any device that you have. Imagine, imagine how big PlayStation Plus would be right now is if they came out and they had said God of War Ragnarok is dropping in that service day one. Think about the amount of people that would have signed up just to be able to play that game. So they have the answers right in front of them. They just aren't willing to do that. They want to be able to charge $70 push their consoles onto people and lock gamers out. They want to be able to make sure that the only way you can access certain games is by going out and purchasing PlayStation. And that's the exact opposite of what Xbox is doing. So that's where the big thing comes in with a lot of these arguments that I think people are getting confused about is that for PlayStation, they want to gatekeep everyone to only be able to access stuff on their platform whereas xbox is like hey we're gonna get these games but we're gonna get access to wherever game passes wherever device that you can access our services you're gonna be able to play them 
And from a consumer and gamer perspective, that is a very good thing. And then there's the entire thing about how this is going to affect workers. This is a major thing that the FTC is looking at in terms of unions. And Microsoft has come out and said that they are going to support unions. They're not going to try to stop the unions and they'll honor them if they create them in Activision when they come over. They also made an agreement with the Communications Workers of America, where they say here in June, Microsoft hammered out an agreement with the CWA promising not to oppose unionization at Activision. The negotiations involved more lawyers than a lawyer convention. Chris Shelton, the union's president, said in an interview, the concessions turned the union into supporters of the deal. But I think that's a huge step that would help this deal go through, having an organization like the CWA now in support of the deal. Now, here's where things get very, very interesting. So as we know, PlayStation complaining about Call of Duty, they were offered a deal or they were offered the fact that Call of Duty was going to stay on PlayStation for a number of years. And apparently now, Xbox came out on November 11th and they offered Sony a 10-year deal to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation, which Sony declined to comment on the offer. And if you remember as well, Microsoft accused Sony of misleading regulators, overstating the importance of Call of Duty to its viability, essentially saying, hey, you can make a competitor. This isn't going to be something that kills your business. And your mind said this in response, that it was not true that his company had misled regulators and that a tech giant with a long history of dominating industries, it is highly likely that the choices gamers have today will disappear if this deal goes ahead, which in my opinion, is such an ironic statement to make from PlayStation and from Jim Ryan, where every time you hear about their deals, it's like it's their goal to take away choice from gamers. I mean, it is their goal. They want you to go out and buy a PlayStation. So it's a very ironic thing to come from Sony. Very hypocritical. And this is why people are so confused by some of these arguments. Then November 11th, they offer that 10 year deal and Phil Spencer and other Microsoft executives actually went to a meeting in London to the CMA, I presume, and showed off Call of Duty and brought an Xbox, PlayStation and Nintendo Switch, as well as other devices and showed off that Call of Duty and other games illustrate a dynamic market. Wonder what they did. Wonder if they showed just the fact that Xbox is available on all of these types of devices when they say other devices in there. And they showed off that like PlayStation and Nintendo games are only locked to that console. Maybe that was something that they demonstrated. I think that would be really smart, especially if these regulars have no idea as to where you can actually access Xbox games. But the 10 year deal thing, that's the big information drop that's the big thing right now that we didn't know about until yesterday if they actually offered them a 10-year deal to keep call of duty on playstation in my opinion that's more than adequate that is something that would just destroy any argument playstation has about this deal and how call of duty is going to potentially come off of their platform how it could hurt their business how it will make them not be able to compete all that stuff goes out the window if they get a 10-year deal guaranteed to keep Call of Duty and all the upcoming releases on the PlayStation platform. 10 years is more than enough time to compete, to come up with something, to be able to, in the very least, provide some sort of competition to keep a big first person shooter relevant on the PlayStation platform. So their excuses now are done if this is true. And the thing here as well is that we don't even know if that means after 10 years, Xbox is going to take Call of Duty off of the platform, they will probably just evaluate the numbers and see where the business is at. And if it doesn't make any sense, they're just going to keep Call of Duty on the platform even after those 10 years. People would argue, well, they want an infinite deal. They want to make sure that Call of Duty will never come off of PlayStation whatsoever. But from what I've heard, from what I've seen, from videos from Hogue Law, for example, that that is something that has never occurred. That's not anything that makes any sense. So arguing that PlayStation wants an uh, offer to never take Call of Duty off the platform is just unrealistic. So things are getting more and more interesting, more and more heating up. And I don't know what this means. If you take a look at the history of the FTC and the CMA and all that type of stuff and how they're trying to be harder on big tech, this deal may get blocked. It quite honestly may get blocked. And we'll see if this information about a 10-year offer changes that whatsoever, but nobody knows. Nobody knows. And this is a 79, 69, $70 billion deal. So there's a reason why there's such in-depth investigations into this thing. The biggest opponent of this deal right now, besides the market authorities, 
is PlayStation. But that's it for me, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Tell me know what you think about everything about the 10 year deal and stuff that they talked about within this article. I will have a link in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. If you enjoyed this video and it's your first time here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll catch you in the next video.